Together with the members of the Seventh Adventist Church, the members of the Reform Movement are waiting for the soon coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is a great day that we are waiting for, and we know that events are going to occur that are going to be difficult in this world. And there have been some differences that have been highlighted throughout this series, but I've left for last the issue that actually kind of started everything off, and that is the issue of combat participation in the military. Can an Adventist participate in military service? What was the position of Adventism from the very beginning with regards to combat participation in the military? Well, at the third general conference session of the Seventh Adventist Church, a decision was made. And this decision is recorded in the Review and Herald, May 23rd of 1865. The decision reads as follows. We are compelled to decline all participation in acts of war and bloodshed. I need you to remember that this is 1865, so we're still talking about the time of the Civil War. And during the Civil War, Adventists made a conscious decision that whether it was a just war or not a just war, they could not participate in acts of war and bloodshed. This has been the position of God's people from the beginning. So from our organized start in the 1800s, Adventists have understood that they cannot participate in military service. This position is consistent with Scripture. In John chapter 18 and verse 36, Jesus says, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Our kingdom is not of this world. And for this reason, we do not participate in the politics of this world. And we also do not participate in the wars of this world. Jesus confirms this position on the Sermon in the Mount, Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 and 44. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. I recognize that this is not a popular position to take. We live in a world that wants to fight. We live in a world that wants to you know, be aggressive all the time and is getting more and more violent. But that is not the character of God's people. We cannot participate in such an activity. And in Luke chapter 9, verse 56, we read that the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. So what happens to an individual when they do participate in a combat role in the military? Once again, we have the words of Christ to refer to in Matthew chapter 26 and verse 52. Jesus says, Put up again thy sword into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Our understanding then is that we cannot participate in acts of war and bloodshed. So imagine the difficulty for the early Adventist church. The civil war is taking place. It's bloody. It is difficult. It is fought for a variety of reasons on each side. But some of those reasons are just. And some feel a need uh, to, to participate in this war. And yet, the servant of the Lord clearly says that participation cannot be part of what the children of God do. In volume one of the testimonies, page 361, we read, I was shown that God's people, who are his peculiar treasure, cannot engage in this perplexing war, for it is opposed to every principle of their faith. In the army, they cannot obey the truth and at the same time obey the requirements of their officers. I understand it's not a popular position to take, and yet it is the only position that is consistent for the people of God. Our kingdom is not of this world. The other thing to remember is that Adventism is not a national belief. It is not a national church. And so there are Adventists in pretty much every single country on this planet. 
If all of them were to follow the advice to take up combat positions in the armies that, of their nations, then you would conceivably have Adventists killing other Adventists on this earth. This cannot be found among the people of God. Our kingdom is not of this world. We were sent here as representatives of the Lord to relieve suffering, and this is the only work that we have been called to do.